Hello and welcome. He's been documenting uh, the mysterious and bizarre side of Thailand for the past 20 years for a number of publications, including um, the International, Hello Tribune, Japan Times, and of course, The Nation, where he used to work for three years. And he also an author of uh, many travel guides. He also um, co-founder of one of Bangkok's most talk about magazines called uh, Frank Antem Travel Magazine. His short fiction won a number of international awards, including the Blum Stoker Awards, of which he was a co recipient In the studio with me right now is author Jim Algy. A warm welcome to you, gentlemen. Thanks, Cam. <laughs> yeah, I know that this is, uh, you know, Jim mm -hmm. Algy had just brought out a new book called uh, Bizarre Thailand, Tales of Crime, Sex, and Black Magic. This one. A yeah, very interesting book. It's uh, a collection of, you know, engaging essays on the bizarre and sexy side mm -hmm. of Thailand, you know, that you have never seen from the TAT. And the author, who is uh, a Canadian writer uh, based in Thailand mm -hmm. for, you know, 20 years, he's the one responsible for, you know, putting together all the, um, you know, enjoyable, engaging accounts of our country, you know, and uh, I'm so glad to meet him in the store right now. So, could Jim, uh, can you tell us first of all, maybe let me begin by asking you about what's your impression of Thailand before you came to the country 20 years ago? Oh. What was it like, Thailand? I had about two or three stereotypes, I think. I knew about Siamese fighting fish. Yes. Right? I'd heard a few stories about Bangkok being allegedly the sex capital of the world which I think I trashed that myth in the book anyways, right. or at least challenged that stereotype. And that was pretty much it. Actually, I wasn't even supposed to be here. I was just gonna get a visa for Taiwan uh -huh. and go teach English over there because I had just been living in Spain and uh, working in writing over there, kind right. of trying to do my own expat author, mm -hmm. Ernest Hemingway, Henry Miller, William Burroughs kind of right. trip. and. Uh, I wanted to come to the Far East to do more stories and that, and right. I thought, well, where can I actually make some money to finance it? And it was going to be Taiwan, yeah. but I couldn't get a visa over mm -hmm. anywhere in Europe. So I was supposed to be in Thailand for, oh, about four or five days, and now 20 years later, here I am. <laughs> you see it. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, a lot of expats have similarly accidental tourist kind right, of stories right, here. Right, you know? right, right. Mm -hmm. I mean, what drew you to Thailand in the first place? Well, I mean, many of the same aspects of the book, you know, particularly the mystical, supernatural side, because that's how I got interested in Asia, doing pro at university doing programs on religion and occult ideas. Right, so I was right. studying all about Taoism, Hinduism, right. loads of Southeast Asian ghost stories and things like that. And uh, so, yeah, that was what really propelled my interest. So then when I got right, here right, and right. found out that that stuff, it's not just textbooks. It's like yeah. you walk into the shop and there's a spirit shrine and somebody's praying to it. You know, you go down the street, there's another shrine. And, right. and just the way that the mi mysticism and the supernatural is so intertwined with daily life here mm. and everything. So I found that immediately riveting and was trying to find out as much as I could about it. Right, right, so, right. But, you know, it takes years and years to actually unravel these things enough so you can even write a couple of paragraphs about right. them. Right. Because initially your beliefs are so shallow or you just think, well, you know, it's a spirit shrine, but they're putting in a bottle of Fanta. Is that blasphemy, or what does that mean? Is there any significance to the red fluid? Or no, it's green. It's Mirinda. There must be something to that. You know, so you take more notes and then ask Thai people, no, no significance. Okay, so that's a dead end. Mm -hmm. And that, so I think it took me, yeah, probably about the three three or four years here yeah. of just reading, researching, talking to people as much as possible before I even started getting down yeah. any stories at all. Right, right, and, right. Uh, yeah. So that's how long it took. And then, uh, but once you start asking those questions and, you know, what's the significance of that? And what's mm. the baby doll? That's the ghost? Is that the Kuman Tong? Or is that used right. in black magic? Or, but wait a second, isn't that from Kun, pa, Kun Chang, Kun Pan, the yeah. famous literary epic? Right. And so it just one question opens up another one. And it's just this mm. vast Pandora's right. box. So that initially, I mean, stories that start quite simply and that yeah. just kind of take on much bigger proportions right. that right. 
cut through politics, big business, yeah, relationships, yeah. every aspect of and life. And interesting characters as well that took you places around the country over yeah. the years, right? Yeah. So uh, that's really lucky for you to, to be able to meet uh, interesting people. But yeah. what I'm going to ask is this, um, uh, since you uh, encounter, you know, a very Asian uh, kind of culture, which is so different from mm -hmm. Canada where you live. Yeah. Uh, what's it a culture shock in the first place? When you see all these things, you know, the, the sort yeah. of Buddhist worship, you know, um, supernatural beliefs, yeah. uh, which is quite endemic um, well, in this country. Yeah, definitely. More like cultural shell shock. Yeah. You know, you're just paralyzed <laughs> almost to the point of not being able to do anything. Yeah. It took me a while just to feel kind of comfortable walking right. around, ordering food, just even taking care of the basic daily necessities. Right. I mean, never mind pondering, you know, Buddhist complexities or any of that stuff. Yeah. So it took quite a while to get into it. but. Yeah. And uh, that certainly required mentors. For me, I mean, the best gurus were my Thai girlfriends. Yeah. Because they would have so to she, sit there. So she was the one who took you to these places. <laughs> yeah. With these yeah. And some of the other women I was involved with before, you know, because they would have to listen to me, right? Yeah. And I could ask them about almost anything. Because I think, you know, you get one thing from a history book. Yeah. It says, here's the official truth. But, you know, how is this a part of your life? How do you interpret that? Like the Siamese twins, for right. example. Like a lot of the stuff I got out of there, uh, parts of the story came from Aunt Chana, just talking yeah. about what she'd heard as a kid. Right. And, right. Well, right. and then right. said, you know, are they called Aunt Chang and Ang? And she said, well, yeah. no. Even the names are different, in Jan, you know, meaning sun, moon, and uh, seen as, as being part of one entity and that, right? So, uh, yeah, a lot of this stuff, I mean, that was very, very helpful in terms of doing research or just getting background material right. was just talking to the girlfriends a lot of the time, oh, right, you know, right, and they'd right. get super annoyed, and one of them would call me, was it Mr. Wondering <laughs> Man, so, you know, stop pestering me, stop asking so many questions, you know, but... Right. I and mean, that's how a lot of the stories got started, really, were kind of inquiries. But, but in the first place, do you think that Thailand was too complex, Thailand and culture were too complex? Yeah. To understand is, is a world in which uh, you see so many shaman, yeah. you know, that's right, spirit yeah. medium, these are the people you, you, you don't normally encounter in your everyday life, no. in a way.